Hello, Les from Thailand here. And today's story is going to be about collection of tea money. <coughs> Call it what you want, tea money, brown envelopes, um, commission, taxes, wherever you want. But I like the phrase tea money because there's plenty of tea money collection here in Thailand. And I'm going to tell you three stories today about tea money collection. Um, <clears throat> two of them involve the same guy at the same bar. Um, I used to be friendly with him when I lived in Pattaya. The first story I'm going to tell you is he had a, a cashier working for him. He had a guest house and bar cashier that worked for him. It, she'd worked for him for about two or three years. And then one day she never turned up at work. And he went into the safe to have a look at the money to put in the float for the till and all the money had gone. 28,000 baht had gone out of the safe and couldn't get in touch with the girl who worked for him with the cashier. So he called his tea money collector uh, to see that he could sort the problem out. He came, came round, had a look and he said, OK, leave it with me. Give me two or three days and I'll get it sorted out for you. And sure enough, three or four days later, the, the tea money collector came and had a word with him and said, we found the girl involved and she has spent the money that she's, that she's taken from you, say, for 28,000 baht. So it's all gone. So she hasn't got a job. So therefore she's not in a position to pay it back. So his solution was for him to re-employ her and deduct 3,000 baht a month from the salary that he was going to pay her. Obviously this, my friend wasn't too happy at that situation and the tea collector turned around and said, well, if you don't do that, case is closed, she can't pay you back or she hasn't got a job. So, not happy with the situation, he thought, well, if I let the girl go, I'm not gonna get any money back. But at least if I get the girl here, she might be sorry because of she worked with me for a long time and she might be sorry and remorseful and pay the money back. So he decided to give her another chance and work, but he made sure there was no money in the safe so she couldn't do the same thing again. And so therefore he deducted 3,000 baht a month from her salary, but he never ever trusted. He always had an eye on her and the relationship really wasn't a very good one if you don't trust your cashier. So anyway, the, the tea collector, case solved, very happy, and he used to come round and have a one or two free beers because the case had been solved. And then he started bringing his friends round and obviously having a few beers and not paying for them at the end of the evening. Now this happened over a four or five week period and there was more and more people coming in for free beers. So eventually the, the guy who ran the, the guest house, he used to sanction to say yes, give them the, the free beers, free drinks. So he knew roughly what time they were coming in. So he always made himself scarce. And uh, so when they asked um, about paying the bill, she said, oh, well, I can't, you know, you've got to pay the bill because my boss isn't here. So eventually he plucked up the courage and, and confronted this guy and said, listen, yes, thank you very much. Case solved. Um, thank you very much for all the work that you've done. Um, you can come in for free beer, but please don't bring any more of your friends. So the guy looked at him, he said, yeah, okay, fair enough. Case closed. So then three months after she started back working for him, she disappeared again. But obviously there was no money in the safe, so she couldn't do anything else. So she paid 9,000 baht off, off the 28,000 baht that she stole. And my friend who, who ran the bar said, well, I'm not gonna bother again to chase her up for this. He just took it on the chin and says, fair enough. I'll move on, get another cashier. Because at the end of the day, when he started paying for the free beers for the, for the tea money collector and then the tea money collector's friends, he said, I probably paid about 10,000 baht in, in fees for, for such things. So he said, at the end of the day, move on, get another cashier. So that was the story about tea money collection from one particular person. 
it happens all over the place. But again, th this guy, whether he was unlucky or whether people had it in for him, I don't really know. But I'll tell you a second story about the same guy and with the immigration department. So this guy, whether he was unlucky or not, I said, but he got a hit from the immigration department. And how this worked is, because he ran a, a guest house and, and bar, he got a telephone call asking to see whether somebody could reserve a room. And it was John who answered the telephone. Now, he put all the money into this uh, guest house and him and his wife at the time ran it. And his, ta his wife's name was Toy. So he had the telephone numbers, English and Thai, so people could contact the guest house. So as it was, my friend answered the telephone and there was a, a man on the other end asking to see whether he could book a room. He said, yeah, 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 no problem, we have rooms tonight. And the guy said, oh, who, who do we ask for? And he said, oh, you just ask for uh, John or Toy. And so therefore, okay, we'll ask for John or Toy. So later on that night, about five o'clock in the evening, this guy walks in and he said, oh, is, is John available? And John, John was sat at the bar, he said, oh, yeah, he said, oh, we booked a room. Yeah, 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 no problem, he said. There you go, there's your, your key for your room. He said, room 2B. And then the guy pulled out his identification from the immigration office and said, you're working without a permit. So therefore, you know, you're in trouble and we're going to take it further. We're going to take you to the immigration office because you're working without a visa. So Thailand being Thailand, obviously there's a, a bit of negotiation goes on and a long story short, the people give him a, a ticket and took 20,000 baht off him for a fine and said if you get caught doing it again he said you're going to end up um, you're going to end up in the immigration department for working without a visa don't do it again so I was very very unhappy first of all the the cashier then the immigration department and he thought oh, why am I doing this he said it's just all the time all the time pay money pay money pay money Anyway, six weeks later, he sort of forgets about what happened. My friend was always up early in the morning, so he was up at eight o'clock in the morning and just cleaning up any bits of paper or bottle tops that were on the floor. And then he put the air board outside to advertise the room rates and what he had to offer. Five minutes later, another guy walks into his guest house and says, immigration you've been working without a visa and he said what do you mean working up he said I've done nothing he said yes you have he said and they showed him a picture of him putting the air board outside so he argued the fact with the guy putting the air board out how does he class that as work he said you have staff he said your staff should be doing that you should be doing nothing here at all so he had a little bit of argument with the immigration officers, so I can't sit and talk to customers, he said, I can't invite customers in, and the guy said, no, basically, you just sit at the bar and do nothing. If you're caught cleaning, going behind the bar, sweeping up, that could be construed as working. So therefore, they charge him another 20,000 baht fine, and said, okay, we're gonna keep an eye on your guest house and bar now, because you've broken the rules two times now. So that was it, he just sort of gave up then and he never did a single job in his bar or guest house apart from talking to the customers and he used to sit down in the chairs or, and he never ever went behind the bar. So much so because he just thought somebody had it in for him and they kept on watching his bar and it took the enjoyment out of running his bar. Although he put all the money into it and it was a good business, he had plenty of customers but he couldn't do the things that he wanted to do without the so-called work visa. So that, that was the two stories with, a, with the same guy running a, a guest house and bar in Pattaya. The next story is, is, is an amusing story. Again, um, it's about somebody who was running a business and he had a, a tea collector who used to come around once a week, 500 baht, to turn a blind eye and oil the wheels of his business, so to speak. So this guy was fed up with having to pay the, the tea money every week to this certain tea money collector, and he thought, I'm gonna do something about this. I've got the, 
more than four staff working for me. I've got a, a, quite a good business, a good turnover. So he decided to do everything legal and he went and got a work permit. And he paid a lot of money for his work permit and it cost him something like 35, 40 pounds a week to work in his own bar with the cost of having a, a work permit. So 35 to 40 pound a week to work in his own bar. So when the team money collector came into his, his bar, he was happy and he walked over towards him and he said, oh, he said, yeah, he said, I'll give you your free drink today. But he said, your team money collection, I'll have to stop. He said, I've got my work visa now. He said, I'm allowed to work in here. So he said, you don't have to keep an eye on me and the bar. And he said, he said, because I'm going to do it legal. I've got all my legal documents and I'm going to work in the bar because I can, because of my documentation. So the team money collector said, yeah, yeah, no problem. Grabbed his beer, went and sat down. So the team money collector called the, the bar owner across and he said, oh, sit down, sit down. And he said, I need to explain something. He said, your bar. He said, I see many customers come in here, drink many beers, drive their car or drive their motorbike from your bar. So he said, if I was to sit over the road and stop these people who were drinking and driving, he said, how many customers do you think you lose? So this guy who ran the bar, he said, how much do you want? 500 baht a week, same before. Okay, there's your 500 baht, he said. I'll see you next week. So even though he did everything legal, the team money collectors have many ways of extracting the money from you. So if you're running a business here in Thailand, be prepared to pay some team money to oil the wheels, to make it an easy transaction for you to be able to work over here in Thailand. It's gonna, it's gonna happen, it does happen, and there are many ways of people to do it. So if you enjoyed the stories, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Leave your comments down below. And if you want, subscribe, that'd be nice. Help my channel along. So until the next time, bye for now.